Hello and welcome to my No Bells and Whistles podcast, coming to you unedited and raw. My name is Obi Grayson Necker. I'm also known as OGN. I am an author, a public speaker, a publisher, a mother, etc. And you're listening to episode 2 of OGN's Business Diary. In this episode, I will be talking about financial freedom and starting a business. So, let's get into it. Have you ever wondered what financial freedom is? Or ever thought of starting a business, but you feel like there's all these reasons why you can't start a business? Well, today, we're going to talk about it. First of all, what is financial freedom? Now, there's so many Um, definitions of financial freedom but for me financial freedom is just being the master of your time basically you have the freedom of choice to do what you want to do when you want to do it as a result of wealth building and asset accumulation today's episode i'm going to be basing it around two myths now myth number one saving money is one of the most important steps to financial freedom Actually, that's not true. It is creating multiple streams of income, generating passive income from assets like shares, property, your company dividends, and patents, etc. Don't get me wrong, saving is important. As the saying goes, you don't stay wealthy by earning and squandering it. But you cannot become financially free by just working and saving. You are financially free when your spending is not coming from your salary or wages, but from money that your money is making for you. Confused? Let me explain. How can your money be making you money? So, let's say you work in McDonald's or KFC, and at the end of the week, you earn some money, or at the end of the month, or yearly, whichever one. So I'm going to go with weekly. So at the end of the week, you earn some money, you take a little bit to the side and put it to the side, and you build a little bit of nest for that month, and then you go and buy a share in a company. Now, if this is a very good share, the share is going to start making you money. How is the share making you money? Now, a share is when you just buy a little amount of the company. So you become a an owner, a part owner of that particular company. Every time the company makes money, which is called profit, part of that profit is given out to the shareholders as dividend. And you get a share of that depending on the amount of share that you've paid for or you bought. Now, this is an example of how your money, which you've earned in KFC or McDonald's, is out there making you money. Every month, you keep getting dividends, or it depends on how the company does it. So they might do it quarterly, where every quarter, um, every quarter they give you a dividend. Now, you haven't bought more shares. It's just that one share, that one money that you've just put into this company to buy a share and every month it is making you money. This is called a passive income. This is an example of how your money is making you money. Another example would be, let's say you bought a property and then you fixed up this property and you decided that you're going to let it out as an Airbnb or rent it out to a couple or family or you might decide that you're going to divvy it up and rent it, the rooms out instead. Now, every month, the people that live in the property pay you money. This money is called rent. But for you, it is an income. So you've taken money once and you went out and you bought a property. You fixed it up. You didn't put any more money after that. Then you put people inside it. But every month the people pay you what is called rent which is an income for you this is an example of a passive income It's an example of how your money is making you money you're not using your time in any of these instances you're not doing anything you just bought something 
and the thing that you've bought with a share or a property is making you money every month. That is passive income. That is an example of how your money can be making you money. Now, another example of a passive income would be a product. So you made a product, you designed a product, and then you patent this product. Now you then decide you want to license the product to people. These people use your product, they make money, and they pay you a share of the profit that they are making. That is an example of your money making you money. You have put money in designing this product, making it useful, successful, something people would want. And now other people are using this product in the sense that they've taken, got a license from you to sell the product. And every time they make profit, they give you money. All these that are examples that I've given you are forms of passive income. I hope this is making sense to you. So now the next thing I'm going to talk about is the myth number two. I have to be young or highly intelligent or educated or from a great family background or be sitting on top of generational wealth before I can achieve financial freedom. That is all not true. The most important thing that you need is the right mindset and the right attitude. Your most powerful asset is your mind. So let's break this down. The three things that you need are know, knowing what you truly want, believing that you can do it, and then going and starting to do it. So I'm going to expand a little bit on those three things. The first one being knowing what you truly want. Now, what you want, it must align with your higher self, your authentic self. It must inspire you or you will end up abandoning it when things get tough and not push through. It must be addictive, inspirational and enjoyable. Now, the second one being that you need to believe that you can do it. You must be able to see yourself being that that you want, doing that thing you want, acting like the sort of person who would do that, create a very clear, detailed mental picture, so vivid it feels real. Now, every morning, affirm to yourself, I can do this. I deserve a life of happiness, abundance, and freedom. Do this every single day so that you actually start getting emotionally involved with this thing that you want and then gradually you find yourself believing that you are actually capable of doing this i can do this i deserve a life of happiness abundance and freedom do this every single morning now the third thing is go and start doing it right now is the very best time for you to get yourself started Remember, winners act and losers procrastinate. Build your life around what you want or love. Take inspired actions. Focus on doing high yield revenue generating activities first each day. Monitor your time. Monetize your time. Maximize your time. You need to be disciplined, dedicated and work smart. So you need to find out for yourself. Ask yourself, what do you want? And I'm asking you now, what do you want? Do not say I want money, big house, lots of cars, to travel, a laptop, a very expensive phone, or a hairpiece or cosmetic surgery or a job. You need to think deeper, think bigger. What do you want to do with that will serve others. What would you want to do that will serve others and still bring you joy and create wealth? Remember, the more people you can serve, basically solve a problem for the wealth you create, the more wealth you create. Then you can go buy a big house, lots of cars, travel, buy a laptop, 
buy a very expensive phone or hairpiece, do a cosmetic surgery, etc. So let's use Ikigai to help you. Now, it's Ikigai just means that whatever you want, in order to determine what you want, write it all down. Now, whatever you're writing down, it must be something that you are passionate about. Something that you love doing without getting fed up. Something that you know will be good. You are very, you are very good at it. Especially if you upscale yourself, you'll be very good at it. Something that is needed by others that solves a problem. Something that you can be paid for to do. So whatever this thing that you want, it must comprise of all of these things that I've just mentioned. Now the proof, they say, is in the pudding. So let's explore some of this myth. Age, background as hindrance to financial success. Now this, I told you, is not true. So let's look at Cornell Harlan Sanders. KFC was founded by Cornell Harlan Sanders in 1952. He was aged 62 years. He died aged 70. So now that means that he was able to enjoy his world for approximately 30 years. So don't say, oh, if I start it when I'm older, I will not be able to enjoy it. You can still enjoy your world. Don't say, I cannot do this because I'm too old to start it. Because you can do it. Now, Colonel Sanders, his father worked on his farm until he broke his leg in a fall and started working as a butcher. His mother worked as a tomato um, cannery where, when her husband passed away. So from the age of 10, he stumbled from one job to another, never lasting long in any of them and earning very little. At the age of 45, his luck looked up, but again didn't last long. At the age of 62, Sanders franchised his secret recipe that he's been perfecting for years. It's called Kentucky Fried Chicken. He franchised this for the first time to the operator of one of Utah's largest restaurants. The restaurant sales went up. It more than tripled in the first year with 75% of their increase coming from sales of this, this fried chicken. Now, at the age of 65, Colonel Sanders, he was left with only his savings and about $105 a month from his social security. So he began traveling to up and down US looking for suitable restaurants to franchise his chicken concept. He would often sleep in the back of his car and he offered to cook his chicken and if workers liked it, he'd negotiate franchise rights. This franchise approach became highly successful and eventually potential franchisees began visiting him instead. Now KFC, as you know, has so many outlets and is recognized internationally. At 73 years old, he sold Kentucky Fried Chicken Corporation for two million. Not too bad. In, the, in today's money, that would be over seventeen point five million dollars. So now let's explore another myth, which is the background, or adversity, or gender as hindrance to financial success. Oprah was born in poverty in rural in rural Mississippi to a single teenage mother who was at the time a housemaid. Oprah spent her first six years living in rural um, poverty with her maternal grandmother, who was so poor that Oprah often wore dresses made of potato sacks. She was molested during her childhood and early teenage years by her cousin, uncle and a family friend and started when she was, this started when she was about nine years old. At age 14, she became pregnant with a son who was born prematurely and died in infancy. So now this is someone that before the age of 15 had gone through so much adversity. 
didn't come from the wealthiest family. Oprah landed a job in, in radio while still in high school and by the time she was 19 years old, she was a co-anchor for the local evening news. She worked there during her senior year of high school and in her first two years of college. Now, she is one of the most influential women in the world and one of the most influential people in the whole world. So, what does this tell you? That it doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter how much education you have. It doesn't matter what you start off with. It is about where you are now and what you do with where you are now. Okay, let's explore education and intelligence as hindrance to financial success. Chandra Chandler Bolt is an investor, advisor, and the CEO of Self Publishing School, which he started in 2015. He dropped out of business administration studies at the College of Charles, um, Charleston. Chandler, in his webinars, is known to say that he was a C average or, um, English student. But still, he was able to write several books and publish it. He didn't let his um, qualification that he got in English stop him. Within months of him starting his business, he had built the business to over $300,000. And he was on track to make, you know, um, to start earning about $1 million in the same year. And this is according to Business Insiders. Today, the business is worth a lot more. Let's explore education and health as hindrance to financial success. Richard Branson attended school up until the age of 16. He had dyslexia and he had poor academic performances because of this, this dyslexia. At the time, uh, dyslexia wasn't really that well known. Now, Branson also had ADHD. This ADHD means attention deficit hyperactive disorder. He didn't let any of these things stop him. So when he finished um, school at the age of 16, he started off squatting in London for a year from the, about the age of 16 when he just finished, between the age of 16 and 17. Now, after failed attempts to grow, sell um, and sell Christmas trees, he launched a magazine named Students in 1966 with a gentleman called Nick Powell. He was only 16 years old. The first issue was published in January 1968. And a year later, Branson's network was estimated at 50,000. He was just about 19 years old. By the time he was 20, he has started a record shop in London. And about 22 years old, he used money and from his record stop to launch the record label called Virgin. And he did, um, he re launched this with his friend called Nick Powell. It is said that the name Virgin was suggested by one of his early employees because they were all new at business. So what am I saying? He didn't know very much about business, but he didn't let it stop him. He was very young. He didn't let it stop him. He had dyslexia and he had ADHD. He didn't let it stop him. Now, he has been involved, up to now he's been involved in a number of failed business ventures, but never less since that stopped him. And that's what I'm talking about, attitude, how your attitude affects what you're doing and being able to be successful. Now, according to Wiki, he once wrote that the secret to bouncing back is not only to be unafraid of failure, but to use them as a motivational and learning tools. As of today, Forbes estimates Richard Branson's network to be about 3.9 billion US dollars. So what am I saying? The only barrier to success you have is you, your mind, your mindset, your attitude. If you set your mind on being successful, 
the sky is no longer the limit so that is the end of the episode for today thanks for joining me on this episode don't forget to subscribe to like to share to comment tell me what you think about the episode tell me about what you your sister stories you can email it to me and i can share it with my the audience and um, add to this so that other people who are listening to this can also read the comment and and get more information thank you see you soon take care bye bye